Thank you. Thank you all so much. So generous to me. Following Megan and Sihi, all I can say is such appreciation for people like them who step up to be parents of children in great need, who step up to be volunteer leaders for organizations like Treehouse. We are just blessed by them. So 24 years ago, I interviewed to become the executive director at Treehouse. The staff was small, only 10 people, but I thought they were doing incredible work. This was the only agency I knew of that focused on supporting kids' developmental needs and interests in life instead of simply trying to eliminate a problem. Children in foster care are often seen as a collection of problems to solve, but Treehouse saw them as kids, just kids, who deserve to have music lessons, play team sports, and sing songs with new friends at camp. Even back then, I knew I was destined to be a Treehouse the only problem was I had zero experience leading an organization. I was a social worker. I'd been a fairly low-level program manager and also served on a board of directors. I had enthusiasm to spare, but not, not the right qualifications for the job. After my second interview for the position, I didn't hear anything. So I called. Then I started calling every week. Eventually, they said, fine, you're hired. So my persistence paid off. Back then, Treehouse took a chance on me. It was an amazing blessing that they chose to see my potential, and that's the same thing you do with kids and youth in foster care. We see their promise. We give them a chance. We invest in their potential. The best way to give kids a chance has not always been so clear. Through the years, we've taken a few leaps of faith and tried a lot of program innovation, not knowing if they would work or not. These are what is, I refer to as our scary moments. Early on, when education became a major focus for Treehouse, the board was reluctant to hire direct service staff. Instead, they tried contract tutoring. It didn't work very well. So we changed course and hired staff to deliver education services. It took failing first to see the direction we needed to take. Our free store makes sure kids have clothes, toys, backpacks, and other essentials. And the store has had a lot of these scary moments. For example, we used to schedule shopping appointments. Only people didn't show up. We switched to open hours, terrified that it would overwhelm us. The change was a big turning point for us because it was the beginning of delivering services based on client needs rather than on organizational convenience. We used to provide a prescribed list to shoppers. Each person could take two pairs of pants, four shirts, one pair of shoes. The idea was that equal experiences for everyone would mean better inventory management. But since we set the shopping list, people ended up taking things they didn't really want, and they didn't get the things they really needed, which was and is the whole point of the store. We realized that clients know what they need better than we do, and we adjusted our shopping criteria. I was worried. Were we going to run out of pants? Well, we did actually run out of pants. But we figured it out and have a well-run, consistent inventory today. At Treehouse, our evolution has been a constant process of evaluating what works, what might work better, and making scary decisions to improve kids' lives. Really, to date, we haven't had a major catastrophe. Knock on wood. That's what amazes me about taking risks. They do, really do result in progress most of the time and always, always result in learning. In our case, progress is the only option because each decision impacts kids. Mary and I adopted both of our kids from foster care, and there were lots of challenges that I've discussed many times at this stage. When they were growing up, I took them to community swim every week for 10 years. It was a sweet, sweet way to be together on a regular basis. 
Daryl was in martial arts and really excelled there. Amber was in Girl Scouts, her church youth group, and dance classes. I think of those activities as little moments of light shining, because that's what life is, a series of little moments strung together. At Treehouse, we're trying to introduce sparks of light to children who've been traumatized by too many negative experiences. It would be great if we could just love all of it away and they are miraculously healed. As you heard, it doesn't work that way, at least not instantly. Things can be going along pretty darn well, and then a setback happens, and they're starting over again. Young adulthood is particularly tenuous. As a parent, I can tell you that 18-year-olds need a lot of help. They don't think they do their parents out there, but they do. Some of it is as simple as texting or calling or dropping by with a how are you doing message. Some of it is responding to a need when they ask for help. One time, my daughter Amber, who's among the most fiercely independent people I will ever know, was facing eviction from her apart apartment. A series of decisions had led her to owe $400, which quickly ballooned to $1,600, and which she could not pay. But she didn't get evicted. Why not? Because her parents paid the $1,600. <laughs> the only thing I said to her was, couldn't you have called me a little earlier so it would be a little cheaper? <laughs> That's what people do because even as our kids become young adults, they get parking tickets, they forget to renew their car insurance, they do things that cause problems for them because they're learning. If they have a network of support, when everything blows up, they can regroup. For most youth in foster care, there is not enough support when they need it most. That means they cannot fail without disastrous repercussions, and I find that unacceptable. Treehouse can and will be there to partner with youth and young adults as they navigate the trials we know are coming. By far, our scariest moment and greatest risk was back in 2012 when we set the goal to double the high school graduation rate for youth in foster care. We have had tremendous success, especially increasing the extended graduation rate from less than 50% to 82% for youth in our graduation success program. That success is my proudest achievement. And we recognize that high, school, that high school diploma is an absolutely critical step, but it is not a destination, and it is not enough. That's why our latest program, Innovation Launch Success, is so important. We're thrilled to be officially announcing that program today. We asked young adults who'd finished high school working with Treehouse what we could do better. Every one of them, every one of them said, we need Treehouse with us every step of the way as we make the long journey into adulthood. How long is that? You know the timeline is different for every young adult. We know the vast majority of our young adults want to go to college. Most of them get as far as enrolling and taking classes, but most don't get beyond the first quarter. This transition is difficult for all of us, but especially youth who've experienced foster care. With Launch Success, we provide ongoing coaching and whatever else they need for a successful launch into adulthood. We ensure each participant builds a strong network of natural supports because we know that having a consistent, caring adult to celebrate accomplishments and problem-solve challenges makes all the difference. We connect them to service providers. Together, we work toward career goals so they keep moving forward beyond that first quarter of college or trade school. Today, you will hear from three young adults who are navigating these obstacles with tenacity and purpose, and you will truly be inspired. We'll be there with continued support until youth in foster care can do what we believe are absolutely critical for a successful launch 
into adulthood. Number one, earn a career credential or a college degree. Number two, land a living wage job. And number three, secure stable housing. These are the foundations for adult success. A lot of what has kept us going is this unbelievable champion, a community of champions. I'm going to say that again. A lot of what has kept us going is this unbelievable community of champions, all of you here today. <laughs> so while not everyone has been a parent, every one of you in this room has been a child. And each of you can surely think about who has influenced you to become who you are today. Surely somebody has made a difference in your life. And those are the relationships Treehouse invests in through our programs. The coach, the teacher, the music uh, teacher or dance teacher, a librarian. We connect youth in their communities to people who care about them and who inspire them to dream big. All those years ago, Treehouse saw my potential and took a chance on me, just like we do today for more than 7,000 kids and youth in foster care every year. So thank you so much for being here today, for investing in the hopes and dreams of our youth, and giving generously. Thank you. <laughs>